Mutant detected. Cuteness affecting judgment. Mutant eliminated. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Amazon exclusive Marvel Legends 3-pack of Psylocke, Nimrod, and Phantom X. Okay, before getting into this, yes, it's all modern renditions of these characters. Well, <laughs> Phantom X, in my mind, is still a modern character. But I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking Nimrod was never high on my list, and I have, well, okay, at least the ninja version of Psylocke. I have the one I need well, on the Jim Lee shelf. I bought this set essentially for Phantom X. Morrison's new X-Men run was what brought me back into comics after a period of being away, doing other things. You know, after high school, you kind of, oh, life. And even though I've fallen back out of comics, that new X-Men run and then Astonishing X-Men, for me, ranked right up there with Outback and some of the classic stuff. And I know this is an X-Force version with the stripes and the lines, but it's still a better Phantom X than what we had. Oh my god. Don't get me wrong, getting Nimrod on the shelf is also a good get, no matter what version is, because it's Nimrod. It's a big, white, chunky robot with pink accents. What more can you ask for? Looking at the package, it's your standard three-pack box. It's larger, larger window. You see everything in it. You have the X in the background. Well, you don't quite see everything. I'm missing a Phantom X pistol somewhere in there. Is that behind the, maybe up here? But I like how clean this looks overall with the kind of silver tint, the yellowish metal look. On the side, box is too big for my review space, but you get a semi-realistic look at Phantom X. And then on the back, that same picture, Nimrod, Psylocke. On the other side, there's another picture of Psylocke. On the top, we get the yellow X with Marvel Legends right square in the middle. On the bottom, legalese, bunch of warnings, don't put them in your mouth, Marvel Legends. But let's get this open. Boom! Let's get this open and see what's going on here. I think most of the weight of this set is in robot form here. What do we got? Yep, yep, I knew it. There's that other pistol. And an insert if you want just a generic background for some pictures or something. It's the Xavier School Class Picture Day. I don't have time for yearbook pictures. Cheese! It bows the plastic tray. There's actually quite a bit of accessories in here. I, I mean, I knew most of this was here, but actually taking it out of the tray that's when you realize the tediousness of oh gotta pull this out and where's the end of this tape and do i have to slice this and, and do i drop the itty bitty pieces down inside the tray starting out with Psylocke simply because she is the most reuse i don't mind this body at all for this version of Psylocke but the modern rendition of Psylocke all the way from right after Outback has never been my favorite. I'm still that guy waiting for the old armored version of Betsy. But I'm not gonna lie, this is a nice representation of the modern look. And it is complete reuse of the Jim Lee Psylocke we got, when was it? It was within the past couple of years. Same head, same hair, same body, same effects, which we'll look at here in a second. I think the only thing different here is the sash. The skin tones are different on the Jim Lee version. It's a bit darker on the new one, a bit paler. And I hate to say the same head since they're painted different and it does give it a completely different look, but at the same time, I think the underlying sculpt is the same. Like I said, the hair is the same, but on the Jim Lee Psylocke, it's all one solid purple color. On this new one, it's a bit lavender and it has some shading to it, some gradation to the color. I really, really, really like this. But otherwise, it is a nude body with some details painted on. And even there, you can see what is that? It looks like when the black was applied, it kind of oversprayed onto the skin tone and then it missed a spot or something was covering that. Or the skin tone is painted on top and it's thin, except right there. It's weird. And then you can see a little bit of slop here and there where the lines don't attach. I do like the sash and it's painted fairly nice. Going over articulation, there is a hinge at the neck with a ball on top. The hair hanging down like usual. It gets in the way, especially when you're trying to look up, but that's not terrible. And she can bury her chin all the way. Whew. There's even a fair amount of tilt. Swivel, the arm hinges out, swivels around. Hinges swivel at the elbow, but it does come up past 90. I like that they've been working on that. And then of course, rotation. Hinge and swivel at the wrist. Unfortunately for her sword hold in hand, it is side to side. Ball joint mid torso. Not the greatest amount of range here. Forward, back, tilt, tilt. It's mostly swivel. Ball coming out to the hip, goes up, back, not much. Out, 
Meh, not bad. I do have a little bit of looseness there. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, bing. Hinge at the ankle goes back. Goes way forward. Forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with her butterfly effect. And that just kind of pinches on the cheeks. And you put the forehead and that's not bad. It seems a little thick. But, yeah, I always like this. She also comes with her katana with an energy effect coming around it. I like that the sword is a bit deeper color than the effect. It gives it a little bit of contrast, helps it stand out. But if you don't want that on there, that does slide off and you just end up with a translucent sword. And then that just slides in her hand, not a problem at all. And even though they aren't hinged right, you can still get her into a two-handed pose. The focus totality of her psychic abilities. Well, in sword form because she also comes with that, the focus totality of her, her psychic knife. That's what I'm getting at. And for that, she does have an alternate left hand that is just a fist that plugs in, and then that just snaps right around it. She's ready to fry your brain. And I do like the colors on these a bit better than the original Jim Lee Psylocke effects. Plus it's more in line with the overall sets effects, so it's kind of a motif we have going on here. Next up for Phantom X, again, I was most excited about this figure, and while it is reuse of the Bucky Cat body, it seems that we're seeing some degradation to that mold. There's some stiff joints here and there, like this foot. Oh my god, that's one thing too. The Cyclops bands. Remember those? They are loose on the figure, and I, while I prefer them to be that way, I want to glue them where I want them. When you first get it out of the package, that's just going to be like, hello, hello. But some of the detents are really stiff, and then I'm getting some rubberiness to some of the joints like the elbows. In fact, out of the package, you can see a slight twist right there to the left one. But I have to admit, the overall proportions and look here are much better than the first version of this figure. This body was way stiffer than the Bucky Cat body ever was. The head was too small the hands were weirdly just and if you think the bucky cat feet are tiny <laughs> look at that i think the only reuse between these two figures is the jacket and they've been running this jacket for years and years and years in fact it's about time to retire that hasbro we need something a little softer a bit more malleable less hard candy shell the head is vastly superior though same concept just yeah much better and before anybody asks yes sometimes it's shown as a full trench coat but most of the time it's almost like a trench vest there's no sleeves to it the costume pokes through it, it's just like the main part and it's just I, I don't know the purpose of this thing but that's the way it is that's his costume <laughs> The glove cuffs are an overlay for the forearm. You can see the white poking out right there, but they are glued down. There's no adjusting them, moving them around, and that does get in the way of articulation a bit. The belt has the appropriate amount of pouches on it. The buckle, I love these little studs sticking out. It's just a small, tiny detail that gives them a little tooth. The holsters are strapped around the legs. And then of course the old original Bucky Cap feet where it looks like there's texture to this but not to the rest of the boot. So that throws me off a bit. The paint, just the black lines on the body because it's a white plastic figure with stripes drawn on. It's mostly clean as far as I can tell until we get to the back. And you can see right there where it was supposed to attach and same thing over here. It just kind of, I'm hoping someday we can get a Phantom X maybe a new trench coat, but all in white, like his original look. For articulation, there is the old hinge and ball at the neck. Can look up until it runs into the neck of the trench coat. Buries the chin. Eh, not a lot of tilt. Swivel. The arm hinges up. Swivels around. Rotation at the bicep. Like I said, the elbows are soft. You gotta kinda, ooh, fudge them up and kind of ease them into it. But the glove cuff does hit the bicep at about 90. Up and down hinge on the gun shooting hands, perfect. Then there's swivel. Hinge at the mid torso, goes all the way forward. Back, really hindered by the coat. Swivel at the waist, hidden by the belt. All coming out to the hip, comes forward even with that holster strapped right there. These are soft enough to just ride the leg up. And then the straps are expertly placed to hide the thigh swivel behind there. Double knee! Where'd you go? The jacket is not soft enough to, uh, well, okay, how about this? No, nope, it won't go. But if we cheat it, turn, he can kick his other butt cheek. Bing! Push the bands back up into place. Hinge at the ankle goes back, all the way. Forward, nice amount. And then forward facing pin for rocker. He comes with his two pistols, they're gun shaped. And if it was good enough for the first version of Phantom X, it's good enough for the second. I do like the colors on the original better though. It almost, well, it does have a wash to it. This is just a plain 
blander silver, I guess. But the new ones have been reworked to have a hole in the barrel. So after you put the guns in the hand, which is easy enough, just push, twist, push, and twist. And the holes in the barrels are for these nifty blast effects that, you know, <laughs> if you want them shooting. <laughs> or if he's done blasting away on whatever enemies he's shooting, he's got these cool smoke effects for the end after, you know, hot lead flies out of there. It's got to cool off a bit. Now these aren't exactly new. They did come with the, I think it was Target exclusive, White Widow. But hey, cool effects are cool effects. I'll take them in any form. If a figure comes with a gun, give him some effects. I'm down for that. And then if you don't want him holding the guns, even though he's perma trigger finger, you can put them in the holster. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get around the jacket, but it works. And then finally, there's the big old Nimrod himself. Nimrod. And like I said, Nimrod's never been high on my list, but I read a lot of comics with the Nimrod in it, and I've seen some clips on YouTube, so I'm good with having an X-Men villain on the shelf, because we always need more villains in the realm of X. This is definitely a modern rendition of it. I think the classic had more pink to the body, and after looking at pictures, I think this is House of X, which I haven't read. At the same time, it's a big, chunky white robot with some pink accents. Okay. It's Nimrod. I'll put it on my shelf. That's not to say I wouldn't buy a classic version, but if they're going to just give us one, I, I'm okay with this. You can see a smoothness to the overall body. It's got that pearlescent type white. Well, I say pearlescent. It's that swirly twirly plastic, that marbleized look. It's not as apparent as a lot of other figures. Oh, well, okay. It's not as noticeable as it is on red bodies or blue bodies. The white kind of hides it, but if you get up close, it's a cool effect. If you're into that kind of thing, I always like this effect. I do have some sloppiness right here to the finish or something, like there's a clear coat right there. It almost looks like a smudged fingerprint. And then I noticed the pink paint right here on the front of the arms is a little bit rough right there, but the stripes look good. So yeah, that's the majority of the figure. And well, I just noticed that smudge goes all the way up onto the head. So it had to have been some kind of spray afterwards or something. But for overall proportions, <laughs> it's an intimidating robot. I mean, the wide shoulders, the arms, the big clunky hands, and then especially you get down to the feet, it's a very wide base. You're not going to have trouble standing this guy up. The translucent pink magenta, I can never help myself from calling this an arc reactor when it's in the chest like this. It does stand out a bit, but it doesn't bother me. I almost like that it's different than the rest of the body. It would have been cool to have translucent stripes running up and down the body, but at the same time, that would probably add a lot more to the cost of an already expensive set. And then the shoulder pads are rubbery attached into the torso, so they kind of get out of the way of the arms. But if I had one grop about this figure, it would be articulation. I can't grop about the neck, though, because that is part of the design from the comics, whether it be modern or classic. Nimrod has always looked like it's just a face stuck on a body that is one piece. I will complain about the torso, though, because... Why make a cut there at all? Well, okay, maybe a little twist that pops back into position. Zoop, zoop. Is that an old Masters of the Universe battle action kind of thing? Or am I about to snap a peg off in the middle of that? Otherwise, though, not a lot of forward and back, not a lot of tilt. The shoulder does hinge up to 90 and then rotates around. Oh, okay. I did not realize that. The shoulder pad is actually on a ring sandwiched between the shoulder and the body. I was getting all ready to go, well, you can only rotate up to here until it's the shoulder pad, but nope, that rides all the way around. Okay, I'm cool with that. There's a swivel at the bicep. Hinge at the elbow only comes to 90. And then at the wrist, there is side to side hinge, rotates. The hip has a click to it. That is scary at first, but you come up to about right there before the armor starts hitting itself. But if you rotate like a stormtrooper, you can get a little more up and it comes up to almost 90 but it looks odd oh and then there's detail on the bottom of the foot i didn't realize that back just a little out uh, nope that's about it rotation at the thigh hidden behind this armor piece but the double knee as tough as these dig tents are you keep pushing and he can kick his futuristic sentinel ass well more like his back i guess i'm back but then you get past that down the ankles <laughs> just looking at this you knew the foot wasn't going to move much you get about that much and really not bad rocker but once you get past this point you're standing on the back anyway so it doesn't really matter but taking all that well the lack of articulation 
I do not want to sound like I'm an apologist for Hasbro. I'm not making excuses for them. But from what I've seen of the comics, or what, what I remember of the comics, and then what I just looked up on YouTube with Nimrod in the animated series, he was mostly just kind of... Would I like to see him just full on running and action poses after the mutants and everything? Yes, and he does have some movement, but at the same time, I can't get that out of my head of him just floating, which <laughs> in a horror movie type environment, you see this floating at you like, nope, send me to the past. I'm done with the future. So yes, I would like more articulation, but this will work for now, <laughs> unless you want to give me a classic Nimrod. For accessories, like I said, I think this is the modern rendition of Nimrod from House of X or some other new book that I haven't read, but that just pops off. You see the peg, you put the other head on. And this is a more classic look with the fully pink, reddish, magenta face on it. A little more energy coming up and around. Definitely the same, it's Nimrod, but if you're going for more classic flavor, this may do you. Then there's also this dragonfly effect for his back. And it's a nice effect, kind of sticking out and flaring out from the middle, his spine, I guess. But you get to the front and it's just essentially uh, the ends of the two top ones and the bottom's kind of lost behind the arms. What I like better though is that it's nice and solid in there with those two pegs. It's a tight fit. In the package, you get the open palms with the, uh, <laughs> I can't help it, it's the repulsor holes. And with that, you get these wacky wild effects that's just a blast with this twisty energy going around it. Two of those, one for each hand. Nice tight fit, not gonna fall out. Unfortunately, you can't get the hands to tilt back far enough for the blast to be shooting out straight. But since he is bigger, maybe he's blasting down on characters. If you turn it to the inside, it's still crooked, but you can get it shooting straight out. But again, because of his size, he can... Again, you see this. But these hands also pop out and there are two fists that plug right in. In case you just want to go fisticuffs with the mutants. Punching, punching, punching. Size-wise, Psylocke stands at six inches to the top of her hair. Phantom Axe stands at about six and a quarter inches tall. And then Nimrod stands eight inches. Here's Nimrod with a couple of other big X-Men type characters. And then of course, Psylocke's gonna stand the exact same height. Same bodies, same head, same hair. But Phantom X is a complete upgrade. He'll now fit in better on the X-Men shelf, just better proportions, better look, better everything. Because here they are with a couple of X-Force members. All I've seen of this Psylocke is that she's from the Dark Angel saga, and I think that's X-Force, so here's this. And then back to Nimrod with Old Man Logan and Bishop. Huh, the more you try to push the hand up to make the blast come out straight, the more it wants to pop out of the socket. It's just too deep right there. If the peg was longer, or this was more shallow, it'd work, but it's just working against itself right there. So at the end of the day, a nice set that I like better than I thought I would, but ooh, is it worth $80? I guess Nimrod is a big chunk of plastic that is a lot of new sculpt and paint and the swirly twirly. But for Psylocke, it's all reuse, which is to balance out the price here. And then Phantom X, has reuse with some new parts like the head and the belt. And hell, I'm not even sure about the belt. It may come from somewhere else. But I do like the upgrade to Phantom X. He is definitely going on my shelf along with Nimrod. And then for Psylocke, I may do a head... Well, no, the skin tone would match, right? Arr. I feel like if this set were maybe $10 cheaper, it'd feel more worth it. I don't know. <laughs> $80 seems right for current Hasbro prices, but for what I just played with, it doesn't feel like $80. But it being Amazon, maybe it'll go on clearance for those who want to wait. I'm more amused by a shiny white robot than I thought I would be. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Psylocke does have a tiny base. Yes, her head is up against the blast. Otherwise, mm, I can get it balanced. See? Yeah, <laughs> she's standing. Same for Phantom X, just smaller feet. They're kind of narrow. He's got a lot of stuff going on upstairs. Uh, yeah, hard to balance. Nimrod has no problem though. He's gonna stand.